Hi, I'm Darren. And I'm Anthony. And this is another episode of Decoded, where we talk about the best in tech of the week. Um, so there's a lot of interesting stuff that happened this week, so this, I think, is going to be a pretty good episode. So what are we starting with? <laughs> uh, well, the first thing we're going to start with is um, next week, on Monday, that it will be WWDC, which is arguably Apple's biggest uh, unveiling event. Yeah, kinda, it's their circus like, event. It's their annual like roadmap. Yeah, event. what they're going to tell us uh, is going to be that they're jumping into home automation. I mean, that will be one of the many things, I'm sure, but I think, yeah. I think that's a... The rumors that have been coming out this week have been focusing around home, home automation, and what's mm -hmm. interesting is that they're not so much taking a hardware approach to it. Like they're not going to—they're not developing their own Nest or something. Right. Um, they're actually just kind of calling together uh, partners um, for what we assume is going to be some kind of iOS integration um, that will allow you to control your your smart homes, your your devices from you know your iPhone, your iPad. Um, yeah, it, it makes sense. They need a new ecosystem and you know, kind of music. Music sales are going to slowly decline as streaming goes, so they got to get you to stay with them. Mm -hmm. So how do they get you? Um, automate your entire house, right? Which is kind of cool. Well, I think one interesting aspect of this is not not so much that that Apple is going to create this home automation, um, you know, system that brings in all your all your you know smart gadgets or whatever. I think what's interesting is that a lot of those gadgets are slowly being acquired by Google. <laughs> Such as right. such as Nest. Um, now it's rumored that they're interested in Dropcam. Yeah, um, so they they definitely. So what do you think? What's, what's that going to do? Like, well, how's that going to work? I don't I don't think they're going to work together. I think what's going to happen is there's going to be two camps. Either you're going to be the iOS camp, or you're going to be in the Google camp, and you're going to work your home accordingly. Like, if it doesn't say powered by Google, you might not be able to use it, so you might have to go somewhere else to get that third-party light switch mm -hmm. that works with whatever Google's going to come up with. And same thing with Apple. I mean, if they start uh, coming up with this whole uh, integration system, you do have to change everything in your house. You know, I have... Um, Legacy devices like um, Honeywell, uh, that one right now controls my home temperature. Um, the app is fine, but I can see what they're going to do. They're going to partner up with them. They're going to get their app integrated into this bigger app, and right. they're going to be able to control everything at one time. But if it's not certified by Google, then I'm going to have to change my, my thermostat tomorrow. So yeah, I've got to see what's happening there. It's one of those things where it's Are hard, they going to partner hard. up? Well, it's hard to imagine that they would, but... Well, they, they sell Nest, and Google owns it, but they sell it in the app st uh, mm -hmm. Apple stores, so... I mean, I think it's one of the things where it, it, it would... I mean, just from a you know common sense standpoint, it would make sense for them to partner up, at least in the, in the, in the short term. I don't think they'll, like, officially partner up, but yeah. maybe they'll, you know, work together in some ways. Well, if the, if the companies, the third-party vendors don't sign exclusive rights, then the apps will work on both Android and iOS, and that'll be great because, you know, home security, if they're going to buy uh, Dropcam, that's all home security. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get home security and you're going to be able to turn everything else on in your house. That's great. I just hope that they don't start pitting us against each other. Yeah, and I think what's interesting is there are there are startups such as SmartThings that mm -hmm. does this kind of thing where they kind of bring together all these partners that so you can get kind of like smart... Yeah, I hope they keep the legacy devices want. going, too. Like, don't just drop them off, because uh, I have a bunch of them already, and I don't want to switch them out, because they're expensive. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, I, and uh, apart from, you know, smart home automation, we'll obviously get uh, iOS 8, which I don't think mm -hmm. we're going to see massive changes to. We'll obviously get a new OS X. Mm -hmm. um, they'll tell us about Beats. They'll tell us about the Beats acquisition what they're gonna do that just that. happened this week. And I also think that, I mean, some people are anticipating, you know, are we going to get... You know, a MacBook Air with Retina, things like that. I think those are all those things are all the specs, that, yeah. uh, that we've might been seeing the rumors of the phone already. I don't think the iWatch yet. I the, think the, the phone iPhone first. 6, yep, uh, iPhone um, six, which looks and, good if those are the real pictures. Right, and probably not Apple TV either. But we'll see. Hmm. Um, What's next? So moving on, uh, another interesting uh, development in video games is mm -hmm. um, that uh, the Xbox One and now uh, announced this week that the PS4 will be coming to China officially. Which, officially, right? So. That's interesting. So Microsoft, I believe it was about a month ago, said that they were going to be doing this. And <clears throat> it was interesting then, and now it's like, now that PS4 is is announcing, it's almost like the console wars like shifting right. countries. <laughs> um, but what's, when you really think about it, you know, they said that they, they're going to have to develop content, because obviously there's sensors. They're going to have to develop content that is uh, yeah. healthy to the, to the national... Right, and like we were talking about earlier, what AAA title is going to be able to be played over there? Probably nothing Well, right it's now. the definition of whatever healthy means. I mean, is mm -hmm. healthy 
violent. I mean, like, I don't, I could not imagine. <laughs> I could not imagine a world in which Watch Dogs get sent No, out no, like that's that, just you know way I mean? too violent, way too much cursing. It's just not going to happen. And I think so. the situation right now is that there's a free trade zone in in Shanghai where you can you can purchase them. You now. can you can yeah. purchase them now in uh, through unofficial channels. Now, of what's going to happen is that Sony and Microsoft are going to partner up with. Um, uh, businesses or companies in Shanghai well, this to is, then distribute throughout it's, China. It's good news all around because now the um, the uh, game companies get to make a hell of a lot more money and uh, more gamers. Right, and so I mean, let's see what happens there is there. there is expected to be ten to ten to sixteen mm, billion. billion. Billion uh, <laughs> dollars <laughs> in that market, so much money. and I think what's interesting before we move on to our last topic yeah. is just to, just to think about that. You know, if there's so much money there. But there's all these restrictions. What does that mean for game developers who want to reach that market? Do they now have to work within those restrictions? Is it all going to be after the fact? You know, I couldn't even, I couldn't even imagine what's going to happen. I mean, it, the indie titles will probably do better, but I can't imagine the big companies censoring their games. I mean, you, you couldn't. You couldn't censor half of them. I, well, that's why I'm thinking you'll start to see planning in, in the early planning stages, trying to create a game that's more suited to that demographic. Yeah. I have no idea. So Watchdog, they'll maybe, be running around with flashlights instead of guns, <laughs> and uh, they'll I have barbecues. <laughs> so it'll just be sim games. I, I don't think that will be the case, but who knows. <laughs> Let's see what Nintendo does, because they're kind of G-rated. Right. So, so I, I think it's interesting, and uh, we'll definitely keep our eyes on it. Um, All right, and the last one is what? The uh, the LG3, right? Yeah, the LG G3 um, actually was you got to see this it, week. So. And I, I got to see it at an event in New York City. Um, and what was interesting about it is, you know, we've talked about the HTC One on the show. Mm -hmm. We've talked about the uh, Galaxy S5. Yep. And as soon as I picked this phone up, <laughs> it was like, the L, like LG G3 was like, OK, what is the best of both of those phones? This and is, then they shoved them and together. And they just shoved it together. And like when you pick up this phone, it's interesting. It has a polycarbonate back, but it has metal skinned. So the feel of it makes you think of the HTC One. But the back is completely removable. You can put in you know 128 micro SD storage. You can put in the 3000 uh, milliamp good. battery. Like an S5, you know? <laughs> so it's like they're kind of trying the best of both worlds approach, I think. Right, and that screen is uh, 2K, I think. It's a quad right? HD. A quad um, HD. So, and it has, I think, that 538 PPI. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we have, you have the Qualcomm uh, 801 Snapdragon. We have. Yeah, we got to see what battery pixels. life is going to be on that. And they, they have, um, they really uh, overhauled their uh, user interface. The icons are much more flatter. Um, yeah, I like it a lot more. When well, because it looks closer to vanilla Android than anything else. Mm -hmm. so. And when I saw the UI on like the G Flex, I, mm -hmm. I just had never been a fan of LG's UI. Mm -hmm. I just think it did look good. Um, I was pleasantly surprised when they showed it, showed it this week. And they also have what, some sort of um, laser focus for the camera? Yeah, they have a laser autofocus, which I, I believe is the first in any smartphone. Um, it, basically what it is is it's a, a laser beam that, that autofocuses the camera. So it's and, instant. And they, they, they report that it's basically as fast as your eye can blink. Uh, okay. If that's the case, I'm sure so we'll see. Right now, we this is the best office, of the best specs that are out. Right now, I right. think um, when it comes to you know camera and, and some of the finer details, it might come in a little bit under the rumored prime. Okay. Um, uh, we'll have to see what the primes are, but seeing. the primes aren't out yet, so we'll have to wait and see. And then maybe we'll do a head-to-head -head when we get them all together. But I mean, just from just from the unveiling and just from what we what we see on paper, it's definitely. definitely and you got to hold it, right? It, it was it's not slippery or anything like that, right? I mean, I did drop it. But that was my fault. That's always <laughs> that was not the phone's fault. <laughs> You're just klutzy. Yes, I'm just klutzy. Okay, that's um, good. So I think that's going to do it for us. Yep. Um, I'm Darren. And I'm Anthony. And this is Decoded.